Hi, welcome to my story. You know, for all of us, life has not been fair. We've all experienced injustice, which is an abuse of power. And when we feel devalued, when we feel dehumanized or shamed, it affects us. And um, so with that said, I want to introduce you to Irvin Forbes. He's a, a very powerful, influential uh, man who is impacting a generation and is an instrument of justice, but he has a story. And EJ, I would love for you to share your story of devaluation. Well, the experience I had with the devaluation was um, at a young age. The, at a young age, you know, when I experienced devaluation, it was actually an education. Mm. I'm more of a, I was more of a quiet, um, young man, so um, you know, some people look at me and go, you know, he's a man of a few words. But now, you know, see, I probably won't stop talking. But that's <laughs> when I became comfortable with myself. But when I was younger, and I just when I was quiet, um, I was I was looked upon as um, one who was not going to be able to follow the instruction um, of the curriculum, or one who would would um, be able to communicate and connect with other students. And so when this label um, happened for me it developed a, a lack of confidence. And I was, I, I struggled with being confident with myself and you, you can hear what's going on. You know, you know how people think, you know, what they think about you. But and at the end of the day, when I experienced that, by the time I um, hit high school, mm -hmm. this, it started kind of coming back. You know, when I became confident, getting to that high school level, it started, I started thinking about my past and thinking about how, you know, I was labeled so young and maybe what if I'm a failure? What if I can't pass my test? What if I struggle um, you know, with certain assignments? How am I viewed? How am I looked at? So, so did you have a propensity then to believe lies about yourself and yes. your worth and your ability? Yes. Mm -hmm. So even if someone never said that to you, you believed it because that label was put on you? Yes. Yes. So was, it, was there anything in your family life or your personal life that fed into that? I believe for, with, with that, looking at that connection, I believe that, you know, this was not only an issue that I had, but um, my experience started, you know, seeing the same thing cycle with my uh, siblings. And then I started asking questions. I asked my parents, you know, how, how did you do in school? How was, what was your process like? And you started hearing uh, some history and hearing, okay, you know, they had some struggles here and there, but they also had some successes as well. Mm -hmm. And so they helped me through the process. They navigated me through the process, but they made me, they made me feel important. They made me feel mm. valued and they made me feel intelligent and, and they, they believed in me. So hearing their stories helped because I can look and say, okay, I can do this. I can make it. I'm going to be okay. Um, and so that was, that's how the family um, connection happened there. And so I did ask those questions. And I, the reason why I think it's important to ask those questions is because uh, you can be in, again, you can be in school and again, you can, you, again, you could take a test. And, you know, for me, I would take a little bit longer. So if I just took a little bit longer, it's just because I was thinking it through and taking my time. Mm -hmm. But you can just easily look around and see, oh, you know, everyone's finished before me. But for me, I just sometimes tried to rush because people were done before me. And so that's, that, again, that's, that's when I was just growing up um, between elementary, middle, and high school. But I've always had that, like, fear um, of, of being rejected. And, but, again, my family really helped me uh, through that process. And didn't always, we didn't always, they didn't always put a lot of pressure on me, but they knew that I could do it and I, I could be successful. So now what do you do in a vocation now? I'm actually an educator. <laughs> so now being an educator, I can instantly, um, you know, connect with a student, and it's not. I don't. I don't see it as difficult. You know, experience helps, but I don't see it as a really difficult thing, uh, for the most part, because I can look at a student and I can say, "Hey, what's going on? How's everything going? Are you struggling here? Are you struggling there?" And they, they'll tell. They will tell you, and they'll be honest with you. Um, but I'm able to really. Uh, connect with them and and see okay if you know, there's a weakness there let's find your strength you have a strength here let's focus on that strength 
And we're going to get to that weakness, but let's focus on your strength so that you can just really be confident in who you are. And then we're going to get to that weakness. At times, do you see in the students where they are struggling and they don't see their value Mm -hmm. because they've been labeled or they have a struggle or they have uh, situations that cause them to feel like they're not as good as somebody else? Yes. And so now you have the amazing opportunity Mm -hmm. to be that one that demonstrates value towards them. Yes. I know you and a little bit of your story and a part of your story about when you were young, you, you felt very abandoned in different situations. Could you tell me about that and how that affected you emotionally? Well, growing up um, and dealing with abandonment, um, it's with, with my family situation and things that were going on in my family, I didn't always have the greatest role models in my life. And so, um, I had, I had role models, but then I had, I didn't have role models in areas that I needed role models. So later on in life, I began to experience that, but that played a, that played a big role in my life. Um, and with having role models in my life, they were able to fill that, they were able to kind of fill that place where I felt empty Mm -hmm. and I needed some kind of attention or I needed some kind of, um, you know, extra support. And, um, and that was really, that really came through mentors, people who could take that place of where I felt uh, abandoned in a specific area in my life. And so um, the abandonment uh, for me, um, I needed a male figure. Mm-hmm. And so uh, not having a male figure from a, a, a younger age leading to the age 11, it was really a big struggle because all I had was my mom. But then I had a great, great, uh, father who came into my life and um, we, we have a blended family and uh, it's a, we have a beautiful family and he came into my life and he became that role model that I needed in a home. And that's really important because we mm-hmm. see a lot of problems more so in homes than anything else. And so we want to see uh, change. We want to see impact. But right in our homes, you know, that's where it all starts. I never forget my dad would say, he go, hey, when you leave this house, when you leave our home, you represent your mom and you represent me. And so for me, I always, that always stuck with me because when I leave this home or leave this house, I am representing them. And so they really helped me with um, just navigate through, uh, you know, that in my life. So you said something very powerful. It's what happens in our home. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a father and that negatively affected you Mm -hmm. and it caused you to feel abandoned and um, isolated and separated, you know, a, a, a little child should not feel the responsibility to be the man of the house, right? Yes, and here you were, a little guy, having to be the man of the, house, the house when you really didn't have the emotional maturity to do that. And really, so many people, a lot of the battles began in their family of origin. Even some have experienced injustices and, and abuse and, and been treated in the most devaluing ways. And... Um, but then things turn for you yes. because the right person came yeah. into your life Absolutely. and that person valued you. Yes. And so what a healing that brought to you. Yeah. And now you are a father with three little girls. Yes. Three beautiful girls. <laughs> and what's so powerful is now you realize the importance of family yes. and what you need to be for them so they can grow up knowing they're valued, knowing that they have a future and that they are intelligent and they can overcome anything and they can be successful. And that's a powerful thing. It is. Well, thank you so much, EJ. I appreciate very much you being a part of my story. And no matter where you've been at in your life, no matter the injustices that you've experienced, uh, no matter the things that you experienced in your family of origin, I want you to know you hold great value. And inside of you, you have a beautiful contribution that the world needs. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad you were a part of my story.